Chapter 10 India Agriculture Introduction Since ancient times, agriculture has remained a prime economic activity of most of the people in India. Even today also, main support for the Indian economy is agriculture. Agriculture is an important resource of India. About 60% of the labor power is engaged in agriculture. Besides supplying food to the people of India, raw material for many industries also comes from agriculture. Agriculture occupies about 22% of the national product. Crops and other farm products hold about 18% contribution in export, which earns huge foreign exchange. The Indian economy is mainly dependent on agriculture. Thus, India is an agrarian country. In most of the areas in India, two or more crops annually can be taken due to the factors like fertile plains, favorable climate for round-the-year cultivation, irrigation, skilled and hard-working farmers, etc. Even then the progress in the field of agriculture is not sufficient. The Indian farmers are generally poor and uneducated. Agricultural production in India is much less compared to the world due to reasons like inadequate facilities of irrigation, irregular and uncertainty of rain, more population, larger family, smaller farms, no interest in experimentation, less usage of chemical fertilizers, modern machinery and scientific approach for cultivation, educated masses opting away from agriculture, the so-called lower status for agriculture in the society, etc. Types of farming The socio-economic condition of the people of India, administrative policy and the entire Indian economy is associated with agriculture. Farming types are classified according to irrigation methods, farm outputs, economic return, etc. Subsistence farming After independence, many agricultural development projects are implemented, yet the economic condition of Indian farmer is very weak even today. Costly seeds, fertilizers, and use of pesticides are not affordable in smaller farm holdings. The farm production is just sufficient for his family, which is consumed in the maintenance of the family. This is called subsistence farming. So even today, Indian agriculture is considered to be an activity for life maintenance only. Dry farming. Where the rainfall is inadequate, Irrigation facilities are less, there farming is dependent only on rain. Only one crop is taken through the humidity accumulated within the land. This is known as dry farming. Crops like jowar, millet and pulses which require less water are grown here. In Gujarat, wheat and gram are grown in the humid soils after the monsoon is over. Wet farming Wet farming is carried out in the regions of heavy rain and adequate facilities for irrigation. If there is no rainfall or if it is insufficient, more than one crop is taken with the help of irrigation, wherein paddy, sugarcane, cotton, wheat and vegetables are grown. Shifting or Joom agriculture here, forests are burnt and cleared and farming is carried out there. The farming takes place for two or three years. When soil fertility is reduced, that area is abandoned and the same method is applied to start farming at other place. This is called Joom cultivation. Cereals or vegetables are grown in this type of agriculture. The production is less in this type of agriculture. Plantation agriculture. This is a special type of agriculture. Here, rubber, 
tea, coffee, cocoa, coconut, apple, mango, oranges, grapes, amla, myrobalan, lemon, kharik or khalela or dried date, etc. are read with great care. It is necessary that there should be more capital investment, skill, technical knowledge, machines, fertilizers, protection on all sides, acquisition and transportation facilities. Intensive farming Intensive farming is the mechanized way of farming through utilization of increased irrigation, use of chemical fertilizers, insecticides and other mechanical equipments. Cash crops are grown more in this type of farming. The per hectare production has increased very much here and the area sown under these crops has increased. As more importance is given to economic returns in this type of farming, it is also known as commercial farming. Farming methods Organic farming, sustainable farming, mixed farming, etc. are some of the current methods of farming in India. Organic farming the rate at which the chemical fertilizers and the insecticides are used, the destructive effects of these chemicals is also felt. Due to the presence of these chemicals and insecticides in grains, vegetables and fruits, it has affected adversely the hygiene of the people. More damage is caused to environment. The productive capacity and fertility of the land has reduced due to which the crop production of the land and its quality were reduced over a long run. Organic farming is that method of farming in which urea or any other chemical fertilizer and insecticides are not used. For the nutrition of the crop, dung, earthworm, fertilizer, composite fertilizer, etc. are used and cow urine, neem solvents, buttermilk, etc are used for the protection of crops. The organic products are full of nutrition. They contain natural taste, sweetness and fragrance. There are minerals, vitamins and life energizing elements in these crops. Nowadays, organic farm products are more in demand so the farmers also get a good return. Sustainable farming in order to see that the soil fertility is retained for a long time, care is taken for crop rotation, use of chemical fertilizers only when necessary, use of biotic controls for insects and harvests, water conservation, etc. Mixed farming. Here, the cattle rearing, poultry, sericulture and fishery, etc. are also carried out simultaneously along with farming. Agricultural Products of India As per the seasons, the agricultural crops of India can be grouped into three categories. 1. Kharif crop 2. Rabi crop and 3. Zaid crop Kharif monsoon crops Crops which are taken during rainy season are called Kharif crops. Time for Kharif crops is from June-July to October-November. Paddy, maize, jowar, millet, cotton, till, groundnut and moong mutt are Kharif crops. Rabi, winter crops. Crops which are taken during winter season are called Rabi crops. Time for Rabi crops is from October-November to March-April. Wheat. Gram, barley, mustard, linseed, etc. are rubby crops. Zaid, summer crops. Crops which are taken during summer season are called Zaid crops. Time for Zaid crops is from March to June. Paddy, maize, groundnut, till, millet and fruits like watermelon, cucumber, muskmelon, etc. are Zaid crops.
Major agricultural crops Due to the diversities in geographical conditions, climate, variety of land, the amount of rainfall, etc., different crops are grown in different parts of India. Major agricultural products of India Food grains Paddy, wheat, jowar, millet, maize, barley. Pulses Tur, moong, gram, peas, bean, mutt, udad, lentil. Oil seeds Groundnut, til, soya bean, castor, mustard, sunflower, coconut, linseed. Beverages Tea, coffee, cocoa. Cash crops Cotton, sugarcane, jute, tobacco, rubber. Condiments Cumin seed, fennel, isabgul, coriander, Fenugreek, Ajwine, Black Pepper, Garlic. Fruits Mango, Banana, Chiku, Papaya, Grape, Jojoba, Apple, Guava. Vegetables Potato, Brinjal, Onion, Bottle Gourd, Turia, Lady's Finger, Cabbage, Cauliflower, Various Spinach. Food grains. Grains are cultivated about 75% of the total area sown and about 50% of the total production comes from grains. Major food grains are as follows. Paddy or rice. Paddy is our most important crop. A large majority of the world and about half of the population of India uses rice. India stands second in the world after China in paddy production. Paddy is sown over one-fourth of the total sown area. Paddy is a crop of torrid zone. Hot and humid climate, minimum temperature of 20 degrees Celsius, fertile alluvial soil and more than 100 cm of rainfall are necessary for more production. In the regions of rainfall in Punjab, Haryana and Uttar Pradesh, this crop is taken through irrigation. More human labor is necessary for paddy cultivation. West Bengal, Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Bihar, Orissa are major paddy producing states. The crop is taken two or three times in West Bengal, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Orissa and Tamil Nadu. In Gujarat, paddy is grown in Surat, Tapi, Panchmahal, Ahmedabad, Kheda, Anand, Valsad districts. Paddy is a crop which requires more water. However, instead of keeping the paddy fields fully under water, paddy is grown by irrigating through sprinklers using less water. Wheat Wheat is the second important crop of our country after paddy. Wheat is grown over one-third area of arable land of our country. It is the substantial food of the people of Northwest India. Wheat is a rubby crop of temperate zone. It requires black or fertile loamy soil and more than 75 cm of annual rainfall. Wheat can be grown in the regions of lesser rainfall with irrigation. Wheat cannot be grown in the area receiving more than 100 cm rainfall. Less labor force is required as mechanization is introduced in wheat cultivation. After the Green Revolution, the wheat production is almost doubled. Wheat cultivation is carried out mostly in Punjab, Haryana and western Uttar Pradesh. These states contribute about two-thirds of the total national production. As there is irrigation facility in these states, there is more per hectare production. Due to the canal water in Punjab, there is abundant wheat production. That is why Punjab is also called as Wheat Bowl of India. Wheat is also produced in the states of Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Gujarat, Maharashtra, West Bengal, etc. 
भालिया wheat is produced in the भाल region of Gujarat. Besides, Mahesana, Rajkot, Junagadh, Kheda also produce wheat. Among all food grains used in the daily meals, wheat is the best. Many items like rotli, bhakri, sev, shiro, lapsi, ladu, sukhadi, bread, puri, cake, biscuits, etc. are prepared from wheat. Among all grains, wheat is the most nutritious. That is why wheat is also called as the king of grains. Jowar, bajra, maize and barley are major coarse grains grown in India. Jowar Jowar is the most produced grain in India after paddy and wheat. This crop is grown very widely in the dry and less rainy region of southern peninsula. Jowar is both kharif and rabi crop. Temperature between 25 to 30 degrees, 50 cm of rainfall, black and loamy soil are favorable conditions. It is produced in Maharashtra, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu, Gujarat states. Maximum farming of Jowar in Gujarat is done in Surat and Tapi districts. Millet Millet is considered to be the grain of laborers. It is grown in the regions having temperature between 25 to 30 degrees, rainfall between 40 to 50 centimeter, and light sandy soil. Major states producing millet are Rajasthan, Gujarat, Uttar Pradesh, and Maharashtra. The Banaskantha district in Gujarat leads in the millet production in Gujarat. Maize This is a Kharif crop. Maize is the most grown crop in the world after paddy and wheat. Maize is grown more in hilly area and it is a staple food of the people. Maize contains starch, oil, protein, biofuel, etc. So it is used more in industrial productions. Slopy, black, hard, rocky and water having gentle flow are more suitable for its cultivation. Rainfall between 50 to 100 cm and 21 to 27 degrees Celsius temperature are favorable factors. It is increasingly used as animal fodder, making popcorn and for edible oil. Major states producing maize are Rajasthan, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Madhya Pradesh, Punjab, Jammu and Kashmir, Himachal Pradesh, Karnataka and Andhra Pradesh. In Gujarat, maize is grown more in Panchmahal, Dahod, Sabarkatha and Aravli districts. Pulses Pulse is the main source of protein for vegetarian people. Tuvar, moong, gram, peas, beans, mutt, udad, etc. are considered as pulses. Tuvar, udad, moong, mutt are kharif crops. Gram, peas and lentil or masoor are rabi crops. Pulses are grown in all states except where rainfall is more. Major pulse producing states are Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Uttar Pradesh, Maharashtra, Orissa, Bihar, Andhra Pradesh, etc. In Gujarat, Tuar is sown more in Vadodara district, Moong and Mutt in Kutch district and Udath in Patan district. Nitrogen is reinstated in soil by growing pulses. So, it is sown as an intercrop along with or after the main food crops. Things to know Nagli or Ragi holds a unique place in the grass food crops sown in Gujarat. Nagli is a staple food of the Adivasi or Aborigin people in hilly region. Among all grass food crops sown in Gujarat and in India, the per hectare production capacity of Nagli is the maximum. Nagli is known as finger millet or African millet in English and is known as 
Bhavta in Gujarat. Nagli is extremely nutritious grass food crop. There is more of protein, minerals and vitamins in its grain. As there are more fibers in Nagli, it is very advantageous for patients of diabetes and cardiac patients. The proportion of calcium and iron is also more in Nagli compared to other crops. So it is used for removing malnutrition and in the making of baby food. The Adivasi farmers eat rotla from the Nagli flower. Besides biscuits, chocolates, toasts, nankatai, wafer, papri, etc. are also prepared from its flour. Oil seed Groundnut, til, soyabean, castor, mustard, sunflower, etc. are considered to be oil seeds. They hold an important position in the Indian meal. After edible oil is extracted from the oil seeds, the remaining oil cake is used as an animal fodder and also as biotic manure. Groundnut Groundnut holds an important position in oil seeds. Black, vital and a mixture of loamy and sandy soil, land which would not retain water, 20 degrees to 25 degrees Celsius temperature and 50 to 70 centimeter rainfall are the favorable conditions. Groundnut is sown as a kharif crop and wherever there is irrigation facility, it can be sown during summer also. Gujarat, Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu and Maharashtra are major producers of groundnut. India ranks second after China in the world in groundnut production. Gujarat leads the country in groundnut production. Junagadh, Deer, Somnath, Amreli, Rajkot, Bhavnagar etc. districts produce groundnut. Groundnut oil as edible oil is used more in Gujarat. Sesam or Til Til oil is used in India since ages. In North India, it is a rain-based kharif crop. In South India, it is sown as rabi crop and occasionally as zaid crop also. Almost all the states grow til. Among all oil seeds, til has more content of oil. In almost all parts of the world, it is used as an edible oil. Major producers of til are Gujarat, Tamil Nadu, West Bengal, Karnataka and Madhya Pradesh states. Gujarat ranks first in India in terms of till production and the area sown. Banaskantha grows maximum till. Maximum export of till in the world is done by India. Mustard This is a rabi crop and is an important crop of North India. Mustard seeds and its oil are used for medicine and also as edible oil. Rajasthan, Uttar Pradesh, West Bengal, Gujarat and Madhya Pradesh are major producers of mustard. Coconut Coconut is a plantation crop of hot and humid coastal climate and saline land. In India, the coconut plantations are found in Karnataka, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Andaman Nicobar, etc. In Gujarat, Coconut is grown in coastal regions. A special type of coconut tree which is shorter and giving more yield is developed. In South India, coconut oil extracted from the coconut kernel is used as edible oil. Besides, the water is used as a healthy drink. Castor Castor oil Castor is also known as divela locally. It is both Kharif as well as Rabi crop. With 64%, India is the largest producer of castor in the world. China and Brazil come next chronologically. About 80% of its production comes from Gujarat. Andhra Pradesh and Rajasthan are other producers. In Gujarat, the districts of Banaskantha, Patan, 
साबरकांठा राजकोट जूनागढ़ अमरेली एट्सेट्रा प्रोड्यूस इन लिटिल क्वांटिटी द ऑयल फ्रॉम कॉटन सीड्स सनफ्लावर पैडी एंड मेज आर आल्सो यूज्ड इंक्रीजिंगली एज एडिबल ऑयल्स हॉट बेवरेजेस टी टी इज अ प्लांट ऑफ ट्रॉपिकल एज वेल एज टेम्परेट जोन द टी लीफ एंड इट्स टेंडर स्प्राउट्स आर प्रोसेस्ड and its powder and small leaves are used as drinks india produces maximum tea after china sri lanka china and india are leading tea exporters slopy land where the water easily flows down good iron contents 20 to 30 degree celsius temperature and about 200 cm of rainfall coming in the form of showers throughout the year are favorable conditions for tea plantations tea is grown more in assam west bengal uttarakhand uttar pradesh tamil nadu and karnataka assam and west bengal produce 75% tea of the nation the tea leaves are very skillfully plucked from the plants coffee Coffee is reared over the slopes of mountains in the shades of larger trees in such a way that no direct sunlight falls on the coffee leaves. The coffee crop needs 150 to 200 cm rainfall and 15 to 28 degree Celsius temperature and slopey mountain land. Coffee is grown in abundance in Karnataka, Kerala and Tamil Nadu. Coorg area of Karnataka is a well known region for coffee production coffee seeds are extracted out of nuts grinded and then it is used as a drink cocoa cocoa is prepared out of the seeds of the cocoa fruit cocoa is a beverage chocolate is prepared from cocoa it requires hot and humid climate and excessive rainfall African countries are its major producers. Cocoa production is on increase in Kerala, Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh and Tamil Nadu states. Cash crops. Cotton. Cotton is a kharif crop. Cotton holds an important place as a cash crop in Gujarat and in India. At world level India is at the second place in the production usage and export of cotton. Cotton without seed is obtained from the cotton plant. This cotton is known as white gold in India. Besides the cotton, seed oil is used as edible oil and its seeds and oil cake are used as animal food. Black lava soil which can retain humidity for a longer time soil with plenty of mineral contents hot and humid climate 20 to 35 degree celsius temperature and 30 to 70 cm rainfall etc are favorable conditions for cotton the growing season for cotton is about 6 to 8 months frost damages the cotton crop in india major cotton producing states are gujarat maharashtra telangana karnataka Andhra Pradesh, Haryana, Rajasthan, Punjab, Tamil Nadu, Odisha, etc. As the farmers of Gujarat have accepted BT cotton seeds, Gujarat stands first in India in area sown, productivity, total production and quality of cotton. Cotton is grown more in Surendranagar, Rajkot, Vadodara, Ahmedabad, Sabarkantha, Mahisana, Botad बरूच खेड़ा सूरत पंचमहाल अमरेली भावनगर पाटन डिस्ट्रिक्ट शुगर केन शुगर केन इज अ मेजर क्रॉप इन इंडिया मैक्सिमम शुगर केन इज सोन इन इंडिया इन द वर्ल्ड इन प्रोडक्शन इंडिया रैंक्स सेकेंड आफ्टर ब्राजील शुगर गुर खानसरी and ethanol are produced out of sugarcane black fertile alluvial lava soil hot and humid climate 
21 to 27 degrees Celsius temperature, 75 to 100 centimeter rainfall are necessary for sugarcane. Uttar Pradesh is at the top in area sown, but Maharashtra leads in the production. South Gujarat and Saurashtra produce more sugarcane in Gujarat. Jute India produces maximum of jute in the world. The jute fiber is called golden fiber. Jute cloth, gunny bags, mattresses, ropes, bags, footwears, handicrafts, items, etc. are made from jute. India has a strong competition with cheap laborers of Bangladesh in jute industry. Jute requires the fertile soil of the Delta region where new sediment is deposited every year. Hot and humid climate, 30 to 40 degrees Celsius temperature and more than 100 centimeter rainfall. Jute is grown more in the Ganga Delta in West Bengal, Assam, Bihar, Orissa and Uttar Pradesh. Tobacco Tobacco is a kharif crop. Sandy loamy soil, 20 degrees Celsius temperature and 100 centimeter rainfall are suitable for tobacco cultivation. Soil is a determining factor than climate for tobacco cultivation. Major four countries in the world which grow and export tobacco are China, Brazil, India and USA. Gujarat, Andhra Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh and Karnataka are major states producing tobacco in India. The Charotar region of Khera district, Anand, Mahisana, Vadodara, Panchmahal grow more tobacco. About 80% of BD tobacco of India is produced in Gujarat. Tobacco is used to make gutkha, BD, cigarette, snuff, etc. Tobacco consumption is harmful to health. Sikkim is the first state to ban tobacco gutka. Rubber Rubber is prepared out of the milk oozing out of the latex trees. Acetic acid is mixed with the milk collected from the rubber plantations. Then it is heated on low temperature to obtain rubber. It is used in many industrial products like tires, tubes, etc. Rubber plantation is carried out in the regions of hot and humid climate and heavy rainfall. Malaysia ranks first in the world in rubber production. In India, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, Assam and Tripura are rubber producing states. Condiments and Spices Gujarat ranks first in the production of cumin seed, fennel seed and isabgol in the world. Besides this, India leads in the production and export of dried coriander, fenugreek, mustard, suva and ajwain. India contributes about 35% in the total world production of condiments. Indian black pepper, cinnamon, clove etc are in high demand in the country and world. Ashwagandha, Tulsi, Kariyatu, Mindhi Aval, White Musli, Madhunashni, Ashok, Garmal, Lindi Piper, Galo, Aloe Vera etc. are included as medicinal plants. And Mint, Menthol, Palm Rosa, Lemongrass etc. are included as flavoured crops. Fruits, Vegetables and Flowers In fruit production, India ranks second after China. Fruits like banana, mango, apple, grape, nashpati, orange etc. are grown in India. Bananas are grown in Tamil Nadu, Gujarat and Maharashtra. Apples in Jammu Kashmir, Himachal Pradesh and grapes in Uttarakhand, Maharashtra, Himachal Pradesh, Jammu Kashmir, Punjab, Tamil Nadu and Andhra Pradesh. As the grape production is less than its demand, it is imported from Afghanistan, Pakistan 
and Australia. Besides, various vegetables are grown. Flowers like rose, jui, mogro, galgota, etc. are also cultivated. Thus, various crops are grown in India. Things to know With the increasing cultivation for cash crops, there is a shortage of grass. Various type of grass like fodder crop, Dharaf or Gujarat Dharaf 1, Anjan or Pusa Yellow Anjan, Marvel or Gujarat Marvel Grass 1, Shanir or Gujarat Shanir 1, and Jinjvo, Dhaman, Hemeta and Klataria are grown in Gujarat. Generally, all grass types should be harvested in October, that is, after four months of sowing them. Technical and Institutional Reforms in Agriculture Earlier, farming was carried out by simple and ordinary farm implements like sickle, spade, hoe or pavdo, drill plough, plough, bullock cart, etc. Now, modern implements have entered into it, of which tractor, trailers, rotavators, etc. are common. Besides, modern equipment like thresher and harvesters are used in the wheat harvesting. There is an increase in the usage of chemical fertilizers, hybrid seeds, Bt seeds, insecticides and drip irrigation and greenhouse etc. Technical reforms The changes which have taken place in seeds, fertilizers and farm implements in India are known as technical reforms. The farmer who earlier used leather buckets and water wheel now uses submersible pumps or monoblock pump, solar pump, drip irrigation and sprinklers. Chemical fertilizers like diammonia phosphate or DAP, nitrogen phosphorus, potash or NPK, urea and other biofertilizers liquid biofertilizer, biotech seeds are used. Farmers are constantly guided through radio, television, newspapers, DD Kisan channel, SMS on mobile by the Kisan, toll-free number 1800-180-1551 Kisan call center, government farm web portals, iKedat, and mobile app like AgriMarket. New agricultural researches and new techniques are conveyed to the farmers in the villages by Gram Sevak. A farmer training center is established in every district headquarter wherein the farmers are given training. Recent information and guidance are provided to the farmers through agricultural fairs in Gujarat. Agricultural University and agricultural colleges are established in every state. Agricultural universities are established at Dantiwada, Junagad, Anand and Navsari in Gujarat. These universities carry out research and prepares new experts in agriculture. Besides these, Indian Council for Agricultural Research or ICAR and Department of Agricultural Research and Education or DARE are active at national level. Institutional Reforms The reforms connected with land ownership, crop subsidy and sale of farm produce are considered to be the institutional reforms in India. Government has discarded landlordism and stopped the exploitation of farmers. Under the law, Land to the Tiller or Land Tenancy Act, the land tillers have been given their right to become the owner of the land. The disparity among the landowners has been removed by Land Sealing Act. Farmers are given financial help for crop subsidy by Kisan credit card and by nationalized and cooperative banks. 
farmers are given full insurance protection for their crops through Prime Minister Crop Insurance Scheme. When the crops fail due to drought or through excessive rain, farmers are given financial help by government. By providing legal support, an open auction process is made widespread for the sale of farm products in the marketing yards. Facilities like cooperative societies, market associations, cooperative warehouses, cold storages, transportation and communication etc. have been provided so that the farmers would get the minimum support price of the farm products. Following organizations are operating for the purchase of the farm products from the farmers at support prices. National Agricultural Cooperative Marketing Federation of India or NAFED, Gujarat Cooperative Oil Seeds Growers Federation or GROFED, National Dairy Development Board or NDDB. Green Revolution Green Revolution took place in our country in the decade of 1960, but before that, there was a time when there was an acute shortage of food grains in the country. An agrarian country had to import food grains. The country was struggling against such dependent conditions. The extraordinary increase in the agricultural production because of improved seeds, increased use of chemical fertilizers, intense efforts of the farmers, widespread arrangement for electricity distribution, improved facilities in irrigation, etc., is known as Green Revolution. Main objective of the Green Revolution was to increase agricultural production. Farmers were encouraged to use chemical fertilizers and insecticides more. This led to attain the target to increase the agricultural production. There has been a record production of wheat and paddy due to Green Revolution. Where there was a scarcity of food grains in the country, today there is sufficient storage of the food grains. Once, drought was a hazard of regular interval in India. Its adverse effects are not seen after the Green Revolution. Due to the buffer stock of food grains, the conditions of drought or scarcity are faced conveniently. The self-sufficiency in food grains is a landmark of historic achievement of Green Revolution. Today, the production of cash crops has increased and the production of pulses and other cereals has decreased with the repetition of the same crop. To reach the stage where other countries of the world have progressed using better technology in agrarian field, we will have to be ready for next Green Revolution. Role of Agriculture in Indian Economy Agriculture is the main occupation in India. The pressure which India had at the time of independence is now reduced somewhat. However, it still has an important contribution in Indian economy. It provides employment to about one half of the population of the country. Agriculture holds about 17% of the total gross domestic production or GDP. Paddy, wheat, oil seeds, cotton, jute, sugarcane, tobacco, potatoes, etc. are major agricultural products of India. Much foreign exchange is earned from their export. India ranks second in the world in agrarian production. Industries like cotton, textile, sugar, paper, oil, etc as well as the industries regarding the food processing get their raw material from agricultural products only. Agriculture provides food to the people of India. The Indian contribution is not consistent in the world agricultural market because of irregular and uncertain rain and inadequate facilities for irrigation. Food security Food security is necessary for any country today. If the demand for the food grains is increasing and if the food grains have to be imported, then the political independence of that country may be at risk. We have become self-reliant in the field of grain production due to green revolution. Along with the increase in farm production, 
there is an increase in population of the country also. In 1951, India's population was at 36 crore 10 lakhs, which today is more than 125 crores. This has increased the demand for food grains. However, there has been an increase in the production of food grains in our country during last five years. In 1950-51, India had produced 51 crore tons of food grains, which has increased to a record level of 265.04 crore tons in 2013-14. With the food grains which we have today, the minimum requirement of the country can be fulfilled. It is necessary to maintain buffer stock and to increase it. By the buffer stock of the grains, the scarcity of the grains can be prevented during droughts or in the case of inadequate production of the food grains. The wastage of food grains can be prevented by implementing the techniques to preserve the grains in warehouses. The hunger of thousands of families can be satisfied if this buffer stock is distributed among them free of charge. It is a strong necessity of the time to stop the wastage of food grains. It is necessary to strengthen food stocking and the arrangements to conserve it. It is a good beginning that the government has made provision to supply the food grains up to the poor people through the Food Security Act. Impact of Globalization on Indian Agriculture The policy of globalization has been implemented with the purpose that the Indian farmer can sell his farm products in world markets and earn profit. Many changes took place in the agricultural field due to globalization. The process to export or import crop productions is made very simple. Cotton, chilies and thill are now available in Chinese markets and various fruits from around the world are now available in Indian market. The costly genetically modified BT seeds sold by the multinational companies are now available in India. Due to this, farming has become costly. The production of cotton and maize has increased. With the imports becoming smoother, the domestic farm products have to face tough competition. Some products have gained global markets, hence the necessity of registration of their patents. It is necessary to register qualitative farm productions as national patent in the world market. To face the competition in agricultural products in global markets, India will have to adopt new technology and concentrate on quality. A series of planned steps will have to be taken to increase the economic prosperity and solidarity of people. With increasing population, the probable future increase in the demand for agricultural products and to maintain the march to economic progress, it is necessary to arrange the strategy for second green revolution.